Okay, so we talked about the um, the landscape. You can call it concept landscape. Uh, if it has assignments, then you can call it assignment landscape. I usually refer both of that as just simply assignment landscape. But we talked about how if you look at any technology, um, the concepts really could be translated into a visual graph. And now, you know, switching this so that you can see my screen, right? On the y-axis, if this is the difficulty level, and these are the concepts. When you go through any official documentation or when you're learn, learning something new, it's concepts everywhere at all varying degrees of difficulty level. Some concepts are similar to another concept and so forth. But again, we talked a little bit earlier why it is important for us as teachers to really identify which are the nice to knows. So I'm going to kind of fill the nice to knows and which are the no need to knows. I also talked about how based on my experience, the must to knows, usually you can build everything in that technology using 10% of what's in the official documentation. These are the core building blocks. Um, and if you never created, never learned that technology, then go in and learn and build something and you will see how, what sections in the documentation you just always go back to. Um, this the 80-20 rule, although in, I think when it comes to nine, technology, I think it could be even, you know, 90-10, where 10% of the stuff delivers 90% of the results. 10% of what's taught in that technology is used to create 90% plus of everything in that technology. And remember, again, the documentation just needs to be comprehensive because what if uh, you need that edge case? So in the documentation, it just gets filled with all these edge cases that you may never use. Uh, for example, when it comes to CSS, there are so many CSS properties out there. But did you, but did you know that out of hundreds of CSS properties, if you really mastered about 20 of them, you can create actually everything? Um, same thing with HTML, same thing with JavaScript, same thing with any frameworks. There are these core building blocks, what I call must to know, that are used to create almost everything. Now, so must to knows are really important. Nice to knows are kind of interesting. Um, so, and I mentioned this a little bit later, if you're creating a course from scratch, so this is your first draft, my advice is only focus on the must-to-knows. Do not even think about the nice-to-knows. Once you're in the revision stage, then you can, and you really, um, you really cracked how to teach the must-to-knows, how to help students internalize the must-to-knows very, very efficiently, then it's time for you to add the nice to knows in the curriculum, but introduce the nice to knows after the must to knows were mastered. Do not mingle nice to knows with must to knows. Have it in a different place. Have them do the must to knows, must to know assignments, level up. They go from level zero, one, two, three, four, five, ten, and then introduce nice to knows. So they go from ten to twelve. Do not introduce nice to knows or no need to knows when they're level zero. Do not introduce those. You're only going to confuse the students. They're going to get overwhelmed and your course is not going to be effective. Now, nice to knows are usually advanced topics. It's almost always advanced topics. And what's interesting is if your course only has the must to knows, even though it may be very powerful, students are going to come back to you and say, oh, but Michael, or your name, your course didn't teach X, Y, and Z. And a lot of times these X, Y, and Z fall in the nice to know or no need to know. And, you know, sometimes you intentionally not taught that. So if that's the case, just tell them. And if too many people come to you and say the same thing, hey, maybe it's time to actually add that in the platform. After the must know have been mastered, then say, hey, by the way, 
you're going to learn about, you're going to hear about these terms. The reason I didn't share or teach that in the course was because of X, Y, and Z. So, you know, let them know. Sometimes these nice to knows, you know, come during interviews. It's not really used, but, you know, uh, people like to ask these technical questions during interviews to really see if you know what you're doing, right? To really see if you have advanced knowledge. So a lot of interviewing questions center around nice to knows. Well, that's okay. You know, once the must to knows have been covered, they leveled them, then you can introduce the nice to knows. But whenever you introduce the nice to know, you got to tell the students that, look, these are nice to knows. You don't really need these. You're probably not going to use it, but it may come up during interviews or you may use it sometime. So I'm intentionally bringing these topics so that you're aware, right? So that we don't want, because we don't want students after they've taken the course to talk to real developers who use that technology and they get grilled and they come back confidence broken and saying, oh, you know, I didn't know any, you know, 50% of what they're talking about. We don't want students to lose confidence, right? So if you really care about the students, and we should, once people have leveled up on the must-knows, let's take some time to introduce some nice-to-know concepts, but be clear again that these are nice-to-knows. Be clear that, um, you know, why you're introducing it. Still keep it very, very focused on the must-knows. I feel that any course, 85 to 90% of the course content needs to be on the must-knows. And again, once people have leveled up on the must-knows, then you can introduce some of the nice-to-knows. Very, very important uh, that you follow that, that you do not mingle the nice-to-knows with must-to-knows. In fact, uh, you know, I would say that some of the courses I create, initially I focus on the must-to-know, I add some nice-to-knows at the end. And then, you know, a uh, new instructor or people uh, that work on their curriculum, they hear about all these other things or they've you know, been using that technology for years and they say, oh, the course doesn't cover this, the course doesn't cover this, the course doesn't cover this, 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 this. So they add a bunch of things into the curriculum. The students don't know when they're level zero what, are the, what no need to knows are, what nice to knows are. But a new instructor who doesn't understand the, the power of the simplicity, they just keep adding things. They don't even add assignments that um you know uh, that do this so they end up with a course where let's say the blue is the assignment they end up with the course that looks like this so they introduce all these other concepts they were never even dis used in any of the assignments so students haven't really internalized these concepts they're confused they're overwhelmed and yes the, the new course instructor may it may feed their ego, like, oh, look at me, how, how smart I am. Look at all these advanced topics that I know. Oh, look at how comprehensive my course is. Look at it. There's no other course who teaches as many concepts as I am. Okay, but that's crap. You should never fall into that trap. Focus on the simplicity. We're not creating a course to feed on our ego. We're creating a course to save students time. That's the ultimate goal. How much time is your course saving the students? If they do it another route, maybe they watch YouTube videos, maybe they you know, bought a $10 course at Udemy and you know, they spend 200 hours watching videos. And if, you're, if you achieve the same outcome, but your course takes the same amount of time, your course is useless. You shouldn't even recommend your course to anyone because they can go to any other course and learn things at the same amount of time, right? So our goal is how much time did we save the students? That's the most important, not how smart do I look? How comprehensive of a course did I create? That's not the end outcome yet. I think it's very easy to fall into that trap of thinking I need to build a comprehensive course. Do not create a comprehensive course. It already exists. It's called the official documentation of that technology. It's comprehensive. You cannot create a more comprehensive thing than the official documentation. Do not do that. Your job as an effective teacher is find out what are those must-knows. Find out. Spend a lot of time thinking about how do I design assignments assignment landscape 
so that students can really internalize these and they go from level 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10 in the shortest amount of time possible. And this is why you got to iterate, you got to teach to live students. If you're teaching to imaginary students, your course probably works in the imaginary world, but not in the real world. To have the course really work in the real world, you got to teach it to real students to get feedback because you may find that, oh, I made a mistake. I thought uh, uh, this concept is at this difficulty level. It really turns out to be over here. So I need to bridge that gap by doing a better job teaching or uh, doing adding another assignment to layer. So anyway, those are really important. Must to knows, nice to know, no need to knows. Okay, whenever a student comes or whenever you're reading something, you got to be able to distinguish which of the three buckets fall, uh, things fall in. Now, if you're creating a course that you're completely new, you may not know. Well, create some things and then just get another experienced developer who spent years in that technology and say, hey, what are the things that they really, really have to know out of this official documentation? What are the things they really have to know? Or what are the concepts they really have to know? And if they don't understand it, they can't really build anything. Well, then focus on that. And then you can ask the you know, developer with that years of experience, what are some nice to know? Things that you may not use all the time, but things that would be helpful. And maybe that comes during interviews and it will be helpful for the students to know so that their confidence is not knocked down when they go through interviews. Because again, after all, a lot of people are learning to be able to find a better job, right? So we want to help the students maintain that confidence during interviews also, okay? Super, super important, okay?